and welcome to another Sandia Mountain Natural History Center quick trip. Today we're in San Ysidro, New Mexico, and we're going to explore this slot canyon. Come on, join me, and let's see what we can find. When you're traveling in a slot canyon, there's a few things to keep in mind. One, you should always keep an eye on the weather. This is formed by fast moving water. And if we were to get a thunderstorm or shower or something, we could easily have a flash flood through here. You also have to be extremely careful when you're climbing around. It's very easy to fall, break a leg or something. And because of that, it's also extremely important that you let people know where you're going. Uh, it's very hard to get a phone signal out of here or to hear you yelling or even see you from above. So letting people know exactly where you are is also an important safety tip. Let's go see what else we can find. So I've climbed up out of the uh, canyon for a minute to have a little bit of lunch. And one of the things that people ask me all the time is, how do I find these places or how do I know about these places? And the simple truth is I don't, but it's a good lesson in that you need to get out and explore. Just pick random spots on the map, let people know where you're going, be prepared, and head out and explore. And you never know what you might find. So these canyons often have pools of water. Uh, I've seen them before, but we can also tell by the, the cracked mud down there but we can also tell by the plants that we have, uh, coyote willow, and here we have a cottonwood, both of which need a lot of water. Here we've come to our first spot of water. My goal is to stay dry. So I might try and detour up and around, make a little climb up this side. So I just climbed up from the bottom. By the way, this is all sandstone. We got a lot of nice uh, lichens here. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get back down in the canyon or the, uh, yeah, the slot canyon to show you more. Um, there's a lot of climbing involved and uh, I'm alone. I'd like to be with other people. So uh, for safety's sake, I'm not sure how much we'll see, get to see more, but uh, maybe I'll come back and bring uh, 
somebody with me and uh, actually rappel down into this. We'll see. So we have found a way back into the canyon and uh, we're gonna head up and see what we find. Just keep in mind, it's very important when you're climbing up and down into these canyons that it's actually easier to climb up than down. Down climbing is uh, very hard. So some things that you can climb up, you may not be able to climb back down. Got a little bit of a scramble here if we want to keep going. I believe I'll be able to get, get up that and keep going. The canyon does seem to widen out a little bit if we can get past this what we call chalk stone. I found several examples of this, what we call conglomerate rock where you can see a lot of little pebbles and all have been cemented to a more solid piece of sandstone. That's a good indication of uh, running water um, of a pebbly, sandy uh, river bottom. Animals do travel in these canyons um, because they're a good source of water. So, for example, this coyote may have come down looking for water, but also hoping to find maybe a pack rat snack or something like that. Well, it looks like the canyon keeps on going, but it's pretty much time for me to head back if I want to get back before dark and before people start worrying about me. But hiking in this country always makes me think of one of my favorite authors named Edward Abbey. He wrote A Desert Solitaire, The Monkey Wrench Gang, and several other books, mainly about the desert Southwest. He's originally from Pennsylvania and went to the University of New Mexico before spending time in the army and eventually settling in the desert Southwest. But I wanted to leave you with his last word of advice. I think it really applies to the type of adventure we had today. One final paragraph of advice. Do not burn yourselves out. Be as I am, a reluctant enthusiast, a part-time crusader, a half-hearted fanatic. Save the other half of yourselves and your lives for pleasure and adventure. It's not enough to fight for the land. It's even more important to enjoy it while you can, while it's still here. So get out there and hunt and fish and mess around with your friends. Ramble out yonder and explore the forest, climb the mountains, bag the peaks, run the rivers, breathe deep of that yet sweet and lucid air. Sit quietly for a while and contemplate the precious stillness the lovely, mysterious, and awesome space. Enjoy yourselves. Keep your brain in your head and your head firmly attached to the body, the body active and alive. And I promise you this much. I promise you this one sweet victory over our enemies, over those desk-bound men and women with their hearts in a safe deposit box and their eyes hypnotized by desk calculators. I promise you this. You'll outlive the bastards. Edward Abbey.